Hi there, this is Marty, and it's been raining all day here, so that means it's a great day to go inside, open up the sketchbook, and try a little painting. I've been learning a new technique uh, with lighting in my paintings, and so I'd like to walk you through that today and give it a try. So come along, and we'll see how that works out. Today I'm going to paint a 1965 Volkswagen microbus scene here. I'll walk you through the technique I used to complete this painting, and I'm going to use a limited palette today. But I'm going to start with the technique I've been learning from the artist and author James Gurney. You can find Mr. Gurney's wonderful YouTube channel among the links here in the description, or just search up James Gurney. This technique involves a spotlight underpainting. I'm using casein here for the underpainting, and the colors I'll use for this are cobalt blue, titanium white, a tiny bit of burnt umber, and yellow ochre. That's about it. Casein is an excellent paint for underpainting or priming because once it dries, it won't lift when you apply watercolor or gouache. And that's what I'm going to do today. So I want a nice underpainting here. And also I'm going to create this, this spotlight technique. So, or the, this um, spotlight view. Kind of a point of light, a focal point of light. See here I've finished this page. I also completed another page. I wanted to have two pages to decide which one I was going to use. And they're dry here, but after mixing applying the paint, I just have to wait a few minutes for, for it to dry. And while I'm waiting, I just made up some uh, small thumbnail sketches. Several of the real benefits of doing thumbnails is they give you some idea of measurement and angle and even composition. But you can see here you can measure distances or mash things up or play with angles and a thumbnail sketch is just that if it's taking you more than a couple of minutes to do it you're probably taking too long but here's where the real benefit comes now I've picked a thumbnail reference and now I can use that as my drawing on top of this uh, underpainting and you can see the focal point of the light there on one of the split windows in the split window VW bus so thumbnails are great and should be used so just going in here with some light pencil marks, just outlining and using my thumbnail as a reference. And then uh, just I want to keep them light, even though the paint's opaque. I don't want any of that line work to show through. I just want it to help guide me. And here I'm using a dry brush. This is a flat. And I'm just thinking, visualizing in my head how I want the strokes to go when I begin the painting. I want to be able to use some bold marks and some big marks to kind of block in the color um, and uh, try to do that confidently, I guess. I'm going to use a very limited palette, palette here, a titanium white, phthalo blue, and a burnt umber. And I'm going to start with the phthalo blue and burnt umber here to warm up a shadow, the shadow that's going to go underneath this micro bus. And you can see I'm just adding um, some titanium white in here, but the issue here is really that the titanium white is really too bright and it should be knocked down a little bit. So I'm going to knock that down with a little yellow. But I like how the, um, the pencil marks are guiding me here. I think the lines are about right. Things are looking pretty evenly spaced here. There's some issues already starting to take shape with some of the angles and lines and incongruities here but again not trying to be perfect I'm just trying to get the basic impression of this uh, micro bus going and the temptation again is to rush into some of the detail but trying to stay away from that as much as I can and there are two big incongruities or anomalies or problems with it that I see in the van right away as I'm painting it here I notice that well the roof is messed up so the back of the roof kind of goes down as if it's dented and then the front uh, turn signals the little circles right above the headlights are kind of misaligned for the angles they should be at so those are two things that I will go in and fix before the drawing is actually complete and you can see here uh, again the tendency is to try to get a little bit more detail than is necessary um, Lots of artists uh, throughout history, at least I think during the impression, Impressionist period and kind of after that, would say that 
unless you want photorealism or something like a, a closer to a photograph hyperrealism, you really have to leave some of the detail out and let the human mind or eye process that detail because it'll fill in the blanks for you. And you'll hear artists talk about how the detail, the mind's eye just kind of fills in the missing detail if your indicators in your painting are good enough. So in other words, if you give the hint at the detail rather than the detail, you're probably achieving some mastery level of painting that, uh, that I haven't achieved. One thing I am pretty good at is trying to keep my lines straight, and that comes from having worked as a draftsman and um, done some illustration over the years. So if I, if I get on a line and I have the right bearing, I can almost always make a single mark if I have enough paint on the brush I can make sort of bold marks and I don't have a lot of problem with that my problems lie really in probably trying to rush to the detail too much or and also missing some of the mistakes you know how you could look at a drawing a thousand times or a painting and say one you've done and always miss the mistakes you've made but somebody else looks at it and at a glance instantly sees that mistake and that's life that's just kind of how it is but at this angle, you can really see that the turn signals are off. Those little circles above the headlights, the one on the left is much lower than the one on the right, so that'll need to, you know, like I said, be fixed. And here, you know, again, um, I think it's okay to add a little bit of detail. I mean, that's what makes it fun, and I enjoy that, so I'm going to do it, even if it's uh, counterintuitive to what the instruction you know what the master painters say and maybe I'll get better at that over time I know I am I'm trying to leave more and more of the detail out and just go with you know hey this indicates that that's gonna be there and I just think that might come through practice and discipline and things like that but um, trying to add a little highlight here and there and then I, I, I again I make <clears throat> this VW logo on the front it's it's okay it's not perfect but I, I can live with it but here's what I did that I would take back if I had to do it over again. And that's try to get some of this reflection on these windows. That didn't work out for me. And I didn't like it so much that I decided to shade or put that side of the van in the shade. Yeah, you can see here, I tried to thin it out very much and then kind of paint over that. I almost would have left that alone if I hadn't tried to draw that reflection. But but here it is, all done. And uh, I was not unhappy with it. And I learned about that spotlight technique from James Gurney, which was great. If you get a chance, pop over to my website, owingsart.com, scroll down on the right-hand side of the page, click that blue follow button, and you'll join about 400 or so other folks who are following along on my artistic journey and I try to make it yours too by sharing my work and thoughts and feelings about artwork and life and whatnot and I just recently made a post out there and it focuses on James Gurney. Well thanks for dropping by today and checking out the video I appreciate it. This has been Marty for OwingsArt.com. So long everybody.